Good morning, welcome to today's Rapid Recreations where I'm going to try and create this beautiful portfolio site. So it features this sticky column over on the right and also this scrolling masonry cards on the left and when you click on them they open up into a full width window. So if you're looking to build a portfolio site this would be a really nice way of displaying your photos or your projects. So this is my plan on how I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to start by adding a single columns block into the page with two columns in it, which gives me that divide. Then in this left hand column, I'm actually going to add a further columns block and add two columns with that one. Now that gives me that three column layout that I'm essentially looking for. Then over here in this right hand column, I'm going to add a heading block here. I'm going to position it probably, I think, by using the spacer block here and also a spacer block beneath it and there is a paragraph block that comes down here as well. And for the left-hand column, I think probably the easiest way for me to do this is using cover blocks. So I could use the query loop block, but I actually think using cover blocks will give me more precision over the control and I can vary the height and do other cool stuff as well. So my site is on the left of the screen. The site I'm trying to build is on the right of the screen. All I've done is install WordPress and also install the 2023 theme. So I'm going to start by creating a brand new page. I'm going to go add new page and I'm just going to publish this page to start with and I'm going to set that as my home page in my reading settings. Now I'm going to edit that page and I'm going to choose the blank page template. This will basically get rid of all my header and footer so I'll basically left with a blank page. But you'll see when I create some content on that page it's still not quite blank in that we have this upper padding at the top. So I'm going to do something now which I wouldn't generally recommend unless you're very confident. I'm going to go into the theme.json file and just search for that padding and you'll see I find it here and I'm going to remove the top padding from that page which means any content I put into that page now will sit flush right against the top of that page. So now I can start to create the actual page over on the right. I'm going to start by adding the columns block and I'm going to make it full width by clicking on the align option in the toolbar and just select full width. Now I'm going to select the left hand column and I'm going to add two columns within that left hand column. This gives me that layout that I want over on the right. Right next up it's time to build out that right hand column. So I'm going to start by adding a heading block and just type those words in. And next up I'm going to select those words and I'm going to change the font size by going to the typography setting. And I'm going to put a custom font size of four rems in there. Now it's not exactly accurate, but it's close enough for my attempt today. Now you'll see one of the great things about 2023 is it has fluid typography. So as the screen gets bigger, the text gets bigger. Next up, I'm going to click on the list view using the little icon at the top there. And I'm going to go insert before. And I'm just going to add a spacer block up here. So I can actually add some space above and below. Now I'm doing this because I've got two lots of text in here. If I just had one lot of text, I'd probably use the padding or margin controls. I'm going to do the same thing below my heading, and I'm just going to grab this bit of content down here over on the right. I'm going to go insert after, and I'm just going to pop that in as a paragraph block, and I'm going to change the size of that font. I'm also going to change the font of that font. So 2023 comes with a few different font families that you can choose from. I'm going to choose this serif one, which isn't completely accurate, but it's close enough again for my demo in the time that I've got. Next up, I'm just gonna set the background color of that entire column. I've grabbed the color over on the right and I'm just using that to set the background color of the column. And then finally, I'm gonna add a little bit of padding. Let's go and have a look at that page. It's not too bad, but the big problem we've got is at the bottom of the right-hand column. Can you see there's some white space? So this is where we're gonna need a little bit of CSS just to fix that columns block so it fills the full viewport width, viewport height rather, of the entire screen. So I'm adding a CSS class to the entire columns block and then I'm using this little plugin here called Simple Custom CSS to pop some CSS in, which basically just says to that columns block, make me the full height of the screen that somebody's viewing it on. Right, next up it's time to build out the left-hand columns and I'm going to use the columns block and the cover block primarily to build this out. And all I'm going to do is add cover blocks for each tile. So here I am adding the first one which is that chair card over on the right. So I add the cover block, set the background image. A few things I need to do here, remove the overlay opacity 
and then I also need to write a title. I'm going to choose a small size for my title, then I write my title in, and then the final thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to position that title to the bottom left of that card. And that gives me the basic layout for that card. Now you can also change the height of it accordingly as well. Then I'm just going to repeat the process for both the left column and the right column. A good tip here is rather than having to recreate them each time, just duplicate them and then replace the images and the text. It'll save you a ton of time. So that's the basic layout done, but we have one major issue in that my right hand column isn't sticky. So when somebody scrolls, my entire website is scrolling, whereas I actually want that right hand column to stick. And we're going to use a plugin to fix this up. The one we're going to use is called Sticky Block. I put a link to it in the description below. This is how you use it. So I'm just going to add it into that right hand column. So I'm going to select the column. I've actually put my text into a group block. I'm going to go insert before, then I'm going to go forward slash sticky. So I'm adding the sticky block within the actual columns, the right hand column. Now all I'm going to do is drag that group block within the sticky block. So it's actually underneath it. You'll see that because it's indented slightly. And now when we go and look at the page, we should see that that right hand column is now stuck, but the left hand column is now moving. The next thing I want to do is that when you click on one of the tiles, it opens up into a full screen. And the way I'm going to do this is to edit the single post template. So even though I'm not using the query loop block for that masonry tile on the left, there's nothing to stop me using the single post layout and editing that and then link to that from those tiles on the front. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to delete everything from the single post template and replace that with one simple cover block because that I think will give me everything I need. Next thing I'm going to do is select the cover block and make it full height and full width by clicking on that little icon. I'm going to replace the title by using the post title block, which will dynamically bring in my post title. And underneath that, I'm going to bring in the post excerpt. And then finally, I'm going to style these and make them this sort of off white color. And now when I go and view these, we should see that it links to that post and that post is using that new post layout. And there we go. It looks beautiful. And then the final, final thing I want to do is have the ability to link back to the original page from that single post. And I'm going to use a plugin called Floating Button Light for this. And you can style this differently, but you'll see when I go and view this post, I now have this nice little home button that just floats there. Just check what this looks like on mobile. So I'm just going to resize my screen to take a look at this. And we'll get to a certain break point, and there we go. Now we've got one issue here, which is that the first column is actually my cards, and I probably want this column here, the right hand column, to be the first column. So I'm just going to add a little bit of CSS, which will reverse my columns on mobile. I will put a link to this in the description below if you want to actually go off and use this. Here's some CSS that I've got. Let's update that. And now when we resize this, we should see that the first thing on the screen is actually, yeah, it is. It's our kind of intro hero page, and that's much better because we want that to show first. And here's my finished portfolio site. It's not identical to the one I was trying to recreate, but it looks fantastic and it does everything that I want it to do. It's slightly different in terms of functionality, but as a portfolio site, I think it works fantastically. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that video, if you can hit that like button now, it would be amazing because it really, really, really does help spread the word of the channel. And also, every time you do hit that like button, our cats get a little treat. If you want to see more videos like this, just hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified every time I release a new one. Keep well, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.